Thank you for joining us for Still Speaking, a podcast from Ivanhoe Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We are a United Church of Christ in Mundelein, Illinois, and an open and affirming congregation. This podcast aims to explore scripture through conversation with the purpose of discovering new insights and enhancing individual faith practices. God is still speaking, and we are all listening to discern a message for today and deepen our faith. Hello and welcome to Still Speaking. We are recording episode number 19. I'm Shelley Grow. I'm here with Pastor Chris Hewitt of Ivanhoe Congregational Church and our producer, Barry Johnson. Today we are going to um, continue the discussion of Epiphany season moving into what very soon will be the Lenten season, and Pastor Chris will share with us some thoughts to guide us through that. Um, as we're recording this, it's the middle of January already. I don't know how this happened, um, but I, I know that we did want to start a little bit by talking about um, what this new year means to us. It is 2020, which I think to many people feels like an auspicious year. Like there's, it's a new decade. It's um, you've got the I don't know, is there a thing as numerical alliteration, but 2020 sure. feels very special. Um, so how can we um, use this meditation to help focus on our intentions for this year? So what we did um, on Sunday was invite people to choose a word, trusting that that by praying and carefully considering that God would be speaking to us through these words, that the words would also choose us. Um, some congregations might have done this as a star word, thinking about Epiphany and the Magi who followed the star to find baby Jesus and bring their gifts, that we as people of faith were also seeking Jesus, trust that God uses many different signs and symbols and stars to guide us into a closer relationship with God. And so... Um, in some communities, you might have been invited on Epiphany Sunday to come and get a star that has a word on it, and it might become your word for the year that you would have this word of intention that you might prayerfully consider and have um, journal about, and perhaps um, you might share that testimony about how that word worked on you. We did it on the Sunday that we remembered the baptism of Jesus, and we were invited into a ritual where we would remember our baptism as well and share a blessing um, and words that said, remember, you are a beloved child of God. And after that ritual, people were invited to, to take a word and a small stone that I said um, I thought looked like a drop of water to remember your baptism. That would like literally be a touchstone that might remind you of that word. Now, of course, we did not police these words, and if the word totally was irrelevant to you, you're invited to take another word. Um, but but we are inviting our, our listeners, if you would like to uh, comment or, or send a note, I can choose you a word and uh, send it to you via uh, email or text or in person, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but we ask for a blessing uh, upon these words, and um, we, we had a, a, a huge list that I, I called down, and and with um, we still have many words available. Uh, Barry just chose a word out of the basket, and, and my word is blessed. And mm, um, As you are. Well, thank you. But I, you know, my ministry and my calling as ministers is, is to uh, invite others to remember how much we are blessed and to share those blessings and, and to be a blessing, and that's something that's a very— um, special word for for me as a person who's ordained and, and asks prayers of blessing upon others and upon sacraments and um, special word that um, that as my my dad was uh, facing the end of his life we were talking about how he wanted to be remembered and the words um, that are inscribed on his tombstone say uh, they live to be a blessing mm. and so how how we take those gifts from God and and try to share those and and offer blessings to others. It's very, very special word that that obviously God chose for me to remember this morning, and I thank Barry for choosing that. Wow. So I know you've been doing some um, professional coaching. And, yes. and Did you do something similar to begin the new year? Yes, I did. Um, so I have been thinking about my word for the year, and the word that I have chosen for 2020 is light, and it means a lot of different things. Um, 
it means I want to be light of heart. I tend to worry a lot about a lot of things and I need to learn how to let some of that go. Um, we, my, me and like other people, which is why I said we, um, wouldn't mind being a few pounds later. So yes. I'm going to focus on healthier habits, not just for um, a specific gene size, but more for what are the things that now that I'm in the middle of my life, I need to be thinking about that'll help me live um, a more energetic and longer life for the second half. Um, light, shining a light on issues that are important to me. So this podcast is part of that mission. Um, we're in an election year, so there's probably elements of that. Um and um, being just being light, um, I, I think that in the past couple of years, um, with the many obligations of parenthood and work that we've talked about in this podcast before, I um, I've struggled a little bit more with depression, and so I just want to find lightness and be more of a positive light in my interactions with people. So. I think that light is just going to be a word that kind of carries through a lot of different elements of my life and mm-hmm. aspects. Barry just handed me a word as well, and it's focus. And I chuckled when he handled it, handed it to me because, um, yep, <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> and and light um, helps us focus. You can you can shine a a, uh, a floodlight on on a lot of things. Or you can shine a spotlight on a single thing. Right. right? And choosing, choosing which focus to have at different times. Wonderful. Well, may God bless that and bless you and all of us in this new year. And of course, light is is what Epiphany season is all about. We take that event of the Epiphany, as in the starlight that the Magi followed, and then we cast it out into this season um, before we go into Lent, and we we ask that. Um, light might shine upon these words that we might see God in them and hear God speaking to us through this story. So last week uh, in worship, so uh, seasonally we went from Epiphany to Baptism of Jesus Sunday, and we read it from a different gospel. In John's gospel, we hear John the Baptist tell us the story about what happened, so we don't actually, we don't actually have have the event, we have a recollection of the event. So this is from John chapter 1, verses 29 through 42. The next day he, as in John the baptizer, saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with the disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which means Peter. So there's a lot going on in this story. Was there anything that that stood out to you? I always really love the stories of people who come and gather and listen to Jesus. I just, I always feel like those are probably very beautiful days where they were sitting together in a home. And I always imagine like sunlight coming through the window and the calm and peace that you would have discussing and learning. 
and I, and I think that that's um that's what we were trying to model this podcast as, as a conversation where uh, mm-hmm. we're sitting around a table trying to trying to have a, a a similar experience yeah gain deeper learning find connections to life and um and draw other people in exactly which is kind of what i see in the second half of this yeah so so these disciples who were disciple means student they were students of of john and when john points to jesus and said this is the guy they go to him he asked them what are you looking for and they say rabbi which means teacher they're looking for for a teacher and and ask where he's staying that they want to that they want to can they want to follow him and and he doesn't give them a command he gives them an invitation or at least that's that's what i see and that's what i love about this uh response he said to them come and see and i think that's what you were just saying that in in our lives as as people of faith we want to share that with others that that we're invited into relationship with the holy one and and through Jesus to see God, I think that you know that's what He's called to reveal as as the Anointed One, as the Messiah, as the Christ. Jesus came to reveal God. We are invited in that relationship with Christ to find God, and then if we are so blessed that we can invite others to into that relationship as well, and we're in, invited to to share that love and that light with the world. So we're um, calling this podcast All That We Are, and um, in kind of the phrasing of come and see all that we are, and to tie that back to our discussion on New Year and New Focus, that um, that through God we can fulfill our purpose on this planet. I think a lot of people at various times in their life are working towards, why am I here? Who can I be? How can I make an impact? Um, that type of a thing. And that by this study, we can learn more about um, the gifts that we have, how we can share them, and how we can help others to do the same. I think that um, one of the one of the ways that we do that is oftentimes we think about uh, what we don't have and what we need to acquire. But if we spin that and think about what we have, what we the gifts that we have, the the things that we enjoy doing, um, there's this uh, great quote of Frederick Buechner that talks about um, where where you find your greatest source of joy and and where you see the needs of the world. Um, I, I like a, a paraphrasing of it that says where your greatest source of joy intersects with the needs of the world. Go and find your calling there at the crossroads. So you think about the gifts that you have, the things that you enjoy. Um, you think of, you see that there are people in need and in need of healing and, and wholeness and that there's brokenness and, and want and what can I do to be of help and of service and to share? Well, you, you, you find the gifts that you have and, and what you enjoy doing and, and you find that crossroad where those things intersect and, and that's where God is calling you to, to be and to participate and, and hopefully that can give you meaning and fulfillment. That's wonderful. Um, this time of year, as we're focusing on how we want to improve, it's really easy to root that in where we feel we're failing. And I, one thing that I really liked, you mentioned the coaching that I go through. One thing that I really liked about an exercise that we did this week was to journal about um, what went really well last year. And that's great because we can all say, oh, I didn't hit that goal or, man, I really hoped that you know, my house would have sold on the market or that this or that or, um, you know, would have happened by now. But instead to really focus on um, what are the things that I feel really, really good about having happened. And um, and that it just made me think of that with what you were saying. Yeah, I think um, through our faith, um, those exercises in, in finding gratitude and to uh, realize those blessings put us in a posture of being more receptive to the next one because if we if we're only thinking about what what didn't go right and what went wrong we continue to look that way mm-hmm. and we'll continue to to nitpick and criticize but if we if we can spin that and or at least open our eyes broader open our ears open our hearts to to see the many blessings that we have and and have a posture of of gratitude um, then we can recognize how much grace there is in in our lives and that God gives to the world. 
my um, my response in the group was um, I did not intentionally set out last year to focus on spirituality. There were some health things that I was focused on, that type of thing. But um, through the Lenten study that we did here at Ivanhoe, um, which has now grown into a, a weekly Bible study, it, it's honestly the birth of the concept for this podcast, all of those things. It brought all of these new insights and practices into my life that um, just by being kind of open to the process, I think really helped improve the quality of my life and relationship with God in that way. And I'm I'm very grateful for that. So um, I mentioned that too, because as we're leading into the next Lenten season, it's something for people to think about how they want to engage with that and use this time of the year to kind of refocus on what practices will help them um, learn. I mean, this is a lifelong thing. There's a Martin Luther quote um, that says, we are not what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. We are on the road. I think that's that's really important, and, and especially at the beginning of a new year, looking back over the past year, uh, you know, I always use the word journey because because life is not um, a, a destination, but it's the journey. Um, there are so many things that we can celebrate when we when we hit those mountaintops, and we can we can and should mourn those valleys that we journey through. But it, it's all about the journey. There's, I think, there's too often. Um, and it's good to make efforts to try to simplify things and, and explain things, but oftentimes there's a, a, an oversimplification about our our faith in achieving um, salvation, and it's not something, you know, it, it's important to know that, that we have salvation through Jesus Christ, and it's important to be able to articulate that, but the fact that that has happened is not a, a once-and-for-all thing. We need to, to remember that grace is new every day and continue that journey, and I think that's why... People are attracted to to that perspective in our faith community and why every single Sunday we try to say in some sort of words, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And we come to be a part of that community. And I think that's what's lovely about the scripture as well is that invitation to come and see. And all of these action words throughout this scripture that talk about seeing and, and revelation and, and seeking and finding and, and looking um, – in this epiphany season, when when we're trying to consider that that light that those magi first followed to see that star that then they found in the baby that then at Jesus' baptism the voice from heaven said this is this is my beloved child and and now these people uh, these disciples were seeking and finding in in Jesus that that revelation continues and, and we have to, with with all that we are we continue to seek with our that we might love God with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength, and then to be able to point others in that similar direction, that we might help others to see that love and light, that it might um, be manifest, and that we might be a part of building up the community of God in the world. I thought I might end with a poem. We, um, I think at, at different times of the years we're drawn to uh, different types of words that way, and I'm often drawn to to hearing um, differently through poetry. Um, this is something I found by Susan Vinson. It's in a collection called Broken Wide Whole Prayers for Daily Living. Um, so it's called Today I Listen. Today I listen at the water's edge, at the edge of containment and contentment. Cicadas, water cascading the hymn of life all around the river moves and i move with it the breeze cools my fiery thoughts if i touch my pen to tongue the words will burn today i am broken wide whole again in my thousand mornings i awaken to myself sitting at the edge of containment and contentment dis-ease and misunderstanding clamor for attention the cicadas win the river frog comes in a close second. My heart leaps with the frog, a welcome exclamation of exuberance. Here, here I am, exactly where I am meant to be in this moment, showing up to myself, a steady commitment. Today, 
I am broken wide whole, resting in the comforts of flesh and bone. So today I listen, and my prayer is that God is still speaking through the words that we might share in this conversation together, the words that were spoken through Holy Scripture as of old, and that we might find in a a way to be relevant for today, that it might be about love and light and about building up the body of Christ in the world. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this podcast from Ivanhoe Congregational Church. We hope you'll join us for worship in Mundelein, Illinois on any Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We aim to offer a warm welcome and a meaningful message. We also invite your feedback. You can find us on Facebook or visit our website at ivanhoechurch.org. That's I-V-A-N-H-O-E church.org. We are an inclusive church living our faith with hope for tomorrow and celebrating our history dating back to 1838. We are strongly committed to social justice and responsible stewardship of God's creation. We extend God's extravagant welcome as revealed in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We welcome all people to join our vibrant, diverse, and supportive faith community. Blessings to you with grace and peace.